guys, this is Chris. You're watching Plumbing X Land, and this is our ride along series where you ride along with me in the cab of the truck in between calls and we talk about stuff. Usually plumbing, but not always. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you go down, take a moment to subscribe. It's completely free. Leave a like on the video while you're at it. And what's most important for me is that you leave a comment. If you can leave a comment, I would really, really appreciate it. It helps the channel out a lot. And uh, it just it helps us get seen by YouTube's algorithm, which in turn helps us get more viewers and helps the channel grow. So if you guys could leave a comment, even if it's, hey, Chris, nice to see you, or, you know, just the, how you like the series, if you got anything to add, any questions, anything at all, I really appreciate the comments, guys. Thank you so much. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about gear, like power tools, hand tools, and like boots, belts, stuff like that. When I first started out in plumbing, I used to just wear a pair of Converse or like a pair of Adidas, a pair of Dickies, whatever company I was working for, a shirt, and uh, sometimes some blue jeans, depending on the occasion. I wore shorts a lot until I got my legs tattooed, and then I stopped wearing shorts because I felt like it turned some of the customers off. But uh, now that I'm a little bit older, I feel like appearance is really a huge part of this guys it's, it's really it's part of what helps your customer relate to you it's part of what you know we're always judging people right like even if you don't want to admit it right when you look at somebody you think wow you know either that guy's really well put together look at him he matches you know he's clean he's you know everything is obviously very well thought out or you look at somebody you go wow that guy's kind of a slob right he just threw on like a wrinkled old shirt you know must have been laundry day or whatever there's a lot of things that go through our mind is what I'm trying to say when, when we first meet somebody, right? So appearance is really a big part of that. And it goes the same for us in the service industry. Appearance is a huge part of it. Um, you want to make sure that you've got a nice pair of boots on. They're clean, you know? They don't have last week's dick job all over them. You know, you're not going to go... The customer doesn't have to ask you, can you please take your boots off because they look like you're going to track mud or whatever through their house. Uh, that's really important guys I never realized how important it was but it is making sure that your truck is clean on the outside and the inside I can't tell you how many times customers have followed me out from a job to the truck and been like wow man you must be really busy you don't have time to clean the truck huh or like recently since we started our company and as you've seen in the back I've got the pack out all put together it's really well put together and nice that is really impressive to a lot of customers when they see that they think oh man this guy cares right he cares not only about his truck about how he looks but he cares about his equipment and the way his material is stored you know this is the kind of guy I want to refer to my friends and my family right those are all things that really go through a customer's mind right and you know I just wanted to quickly go over a couple things like belts you know you wouldn't think a belt is a big deal right like this is the type of belt I've always worn okay it's just your typical run-of-the-mill fake leather belt okay and uh, recently this belt was like really hurting it was really like digging into my hips and stuff I think because I put on a little bit of weight so it, it this belt was a little too small but even though it's a little too small it was just it's always been really uncomfortable and uh, so I went to the Red Wing store and I bought a Red Wing belt yeah, it was 50 bucks, but versus, you know, probably 10 for this one or 20, but the belt is so much more comfortable. I've never had a nice belt before. I changed all those other things like my boots, my pants, you know, I wear work pants now and I wear a nice pair of work boots and uh, all that stuff. We make sure we wear nice collared shirts, you know, quality shirts. When they start to fade, we replace them. Um, we do all that, but this belt is a game changer so if you guys haven't ever had like a real leather work belt i highly recommend it okay red wing is the first one i've ever owned and i can't say enough good things about it i mean instead of like squeezing you it like hugs you and the guy at red wing told me okay that belt's gonna stretch a little bit so you're probably gonna have to go down a loop in a few days and he was right but man it just makes a huge difference it makes a huge huge difference i don't have to go home and immediately take my belt off or loosen my pants you know, it's like I can sleep in this belt. Honestly, it's it, it's nice. It hugs you instead of squeezing you. The next thing is your boots. You want to make sure you've got some nice quality boots. Like I said, you don't want boots that look like they're all dirty and scummy. 
you want a nice pair of like Red Wings, Thoroughgoods, Danners, uh, Keens, uh, Georgia boots, Ariads, like there's all these boots out there. I'm actually doing a series right now on boots. There's so many out there. I went down a huge rabbit hole on boots and leather and all this stuff recently. You'd be so surprised and you will be surprised if you're subscribed and you're, you are you have the notifications turned on because that series will be coming out soon. You're gonna see a lot about boots. For me, comfortability is a big factor, okay? The fact that they're gonna hold up is a big factor. Being able to resold them is a big factor on the more expensive boots. And, um, but for me, the most important part is how they look, right? Like, outside of comfortability, obviously them being comfortable is the most important part, but then the very next step is how do they look? Are they decent looking boots? Do they go well with the uniform? You know, there's a lot of things that come into play, for me at least. I don't think a lot of guys are the same, but for me, it's a big deal, you know? I don't like the slip-ons. I know a lot of guys are, you know, they like the slip-ons and stuff like that. I don't really like the slip-ons. I just think that they look kind of weird. Uh, and um, I, I feel like I could imagine myself being in a trench, stepping in some mud, and the slip-on popping off my foot, you know? Stuff like that. So those of you that wear the slip-ons, more power to you. If you've got, like, any information you'd like to feed me down in the comments on slip-ons, I'd appreciate it. Uh, the last th the last couple things I wanted to talk about were your, your tools, your power tools and your hand tools, okay? Back in 2018, I was working, it may have been 2017, uh, it was the beginning of 2018, I believe, I was working for a company where the owner, he, he had, he really liked me, we were, we would talk occasionally, I felt like, kind of like, almost like he treated me almost like an equal, you know, and, uh, one day he was talking about one of his other guys, and he said, you know, I knew that guy was never gonna last, and I knew he didn't care, just based off of the tools he had, and that seemed really interesting to me, and he went on to say, you know, when he pulled out his homeowner Ryobi tools and then he had his uh, uh, Harbor Freight hand tools that were all beat up and not taken care of he's like I should have let him go then right well I come from a different I came from a different school of thought where my dad bought all his tools at Harbor Freight uh, you know his his power tools were Ryobi or whatever other cheaper stuff because my dad you know and I were have always been very hard on our tools uh, you know replace we typically were so hard on them that they need to be replaced in a short amount of time and if we had the more expensive higher end tools man that would get real costly right that was our school of thought well one day that boss had me take his truck to go do a job I think he had an emergency at home or something like that and he had a job that he needed done that day so he said you know he called me he said hey Chris I left my truck keys on the uh, on my desk at the office can you take my truck and go do this job for me. I said, absolutely. You know, I went there, I did it, and he, I used his power tools and his hand tools and stuff like that. And man, from that day forward, I was sold on Milwaukee. So that coupled with the conversation me and him had had about, you know, your power tools say a lot about you. Maybe not so much to the homeowner, but definitely to other contractors. Although a lot of homeowners have complimented me on my power tools and my tools and how organized I am, how clean everything is, you know, how I have everything, how I have a tool for every little thing. People really appreciate that kind of stuff, okay? And it really is coming from a guy who started with cheaper tools, okay, and came from that school of thought, the cheaper tools, replace them when they get lost, replace them when they break, this and that. That was always my school of thought. But my Milwaukee's, I haven't had to replace. I mean, they're still going strong. And I take good care of them because they're more expensive. I haven't lost them. I've left a drill here and there, but I almost always immediately realize and will go back or call the customer and go get it. Um, it's nothing like the cheaper stuff that you just don't really care so much about. You kind of just lose track of it because it doesn't matter as much to you. Uh, on top of, like I said, the image that it portrays when you've got the nicer stuff. When the homeowner sees you're using the same tools he has, he thinks, shoot, I could have done that, right? But when he sees you've got these higher end tools, right? Stuff that he's seen at the, the, the hardware stores or the Home Depots and stuff, but he thought, oh gosh, that's for the pros. You know what I mean? When you show up with a professional tool, the homeowner, that's what he looks at you as, a professional. When you show up with the, with the homeowner tools, the tools that the do-it-yourselfers and the homeowners use, that's what they look at you as. They look at you as a homeowner, uh, do-it-yourselfer type guy. Okay, so all this stuff is, makes a big difference in your life. It makes a big difference as a tradesman. 
really appreciate you guys. Like I said, leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe. Love you guys. Take care.